Here we go. What's up everyone? Today we're going to be dropping the engine back inside the Plymouth Satellite. So first thing we got to do is we actually have a cart that I put together yesterday. We have a few people coming over. We're going to have to hand the transmission in, bolt the transmission in. Then we'll put the engine in. We're going to do it separately. Uh, normally I would like to do both at the same time, but just with everything, you know, it's going to be a lot easier just to do two separate ones. Now, what the plan is, because gravel driveway, is we're going to go ahead and get this thing set up and actually roll the car towards it and we can put her in. So let me go ahead and finish prepping up and let's take a quick look at my uh, engine trolley. <laughs> I sure hope this isn't too over, uh, you know, top heavy. And uh, we'll see how well it holds up too. It is kind of concerning. <laughs> I, need to, I need to actually buy one that I can build like ramps and stuff, I don't know, a garage. I need to build a garage. That's what I need to do. All right, guys, let's get this thing pulled out of here. On a scale of one to 10, I would say that was a zero as far as success. Well, not a zero. The engine didn't end up on the ground. So we'll give it a three. Because I don't think that was supposed to be left behind. <laughs> yeah. But hey, I made it. <laughs> oh, Lord. We'll, we'll, we'll come up with another design for a skid a little later. <laughs> it did not like it. It just, everything just went, Bleh. except for the wood. The wood survived. Anyways, all right, we should have a few people here shortly and we'll be able to get to work.
All right, guys, it was a long day. I'm hoping you enjoyed the time lapse of that. Uh, let's kind of go over what happened. So here's Kobe. Kobe has his own uh, Instagram channel. It's X115 Lester C. That's X115 Lester C. Go check it out and convince him to start his own YouTube channel. Now, just we got to quickly step back and look at the uh, overall stance of the car. Now we still have. I told you we were going to rake it a little bit better with the engine in there and guys, it, oh, talk about making it look aggressive. Absolutely awesome guys. But let's go ahead and take a quick peek at this gem underneath the hood, which this hood really is a lot lighter than the pickup truck hood, I'll tell you. Just look at that glorious thing guys. I absolutely love it. So a few things. I know when we were first putting this all together, Tony said that the one inch spacer would clear the hood with this entire setup. It, it will not. It's about three quarters of an inch too tall at that point. So next time we're up at Nick's and we're dynoing this, we're going to dyno it as we have it sitting here so we know what kind of numbers we're really looking at. But boy guys, I'll tell you what. Talk about a mean looking engine. I think it fits the overall style of this car just to the T. Absolutely awesome, guys. So, of course, we have a lot we still have to do. You know, everything on here is going to be brand new. I still need to paint our alternator. And we're not going to be reinstalling the air conditioning right now because all of the air conditioning lines were totally rotten. So, at some point, I would like to reinstall that because it does have a cool look to it. And uh, I would like air conditioning in there. <laughs> The older you get, the more you appreciate air conditioning. That's all I got to say. But um, we still need to install the radiator. We won't put the uh, the rest of the air conditioning system in. We're just going to get it so that we can run it. Maybe even bring it down to the track. I want to see how well this goes against a few uh, of my buddy's cars. And, you know, break her in proper. So a big, big thank you to Kobe and also Kevin for stopping out today. And... Uh, it definitely made the job go a lot easier. One thing I did do wrong was I had the engine mounts on the wrong side. Quickly flipped it around and she went in a lot, a lot, lot better. So everyone head over to his Instagram, you know, hit the subscribe or however they say that in an Instagram, follow, 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 hit the follow button. I am not a social media guy. <laughs> you, I mean, YouTube is one thing. I enjoy that, but I don't know how Instagram works. <laughs> so go. <laughs> yeah, go check him out and uh, show him. It's say, tell him thank you very much. So we are going to pull all the electronics out of the pickup truck because we do know that all those work. And a lot of this stuff is unknown. And remember, we need this thing to click right on like a, a TV. And we need to run it for 20 minutes. And we don't want to be fighting with electronics. So <sighs> look at that, guys. The uh, other thing is if we come around to this side... I was very happy that I didn't put the floor pan in quite yet because it made for putting the bolts into the radi or the uh, radiator cross member. Oh, I left my hammer down here. We need that. That doesn't stay here. Um, the torsion bar cross member, it made mounting the, the transmission and also it will make plugging all our stuff very easy. So once it's all in, we'll go ahead and get the new floor pans and install them. But guys, this has come a long way since we pulled this home from New Jersey. And uh, I am so happy with the way it's turning out. So, well, guys, it's coming together fairly well. I'm going to have to modify the existing bracketry for this because I am not going to hook up the air conditioning. So I just don't want it in the way right now. It'll make putting it all together and running it, you know, troubleshooting if anything comes up a lot easier. Now, I still need to put the, uh, the alternator on. So, uh, you know, things will have to be mocked up and we'll have to make our own brackets but this right here all set went in fairly easy had to go in from below i had to take the uh oil filter adapter off and i will have to reinstall that in a little bit over on this side well things are not so easy now what we're running into is it's just not fitting right the big issue that i i can find is of course downside of headers Sometimes you have to take things apart and feed it through and everything. So the steering is actually going to have to go through the uh, the header, which sucks, but it is what it is. I don't know why. Maybe it's so that it's probably so that you could still fit the the original starter in there. But anyways, 
I, I hope I could fit the original starter in there, but I guess we're going to have to wait and find out. Now, that's one of the downside of headers is they, they really can be a pain right in the neck. So just future reference. <laughs> Anyways, let me go ahead and uh, pop this together and or pop that apart, pop it back together and see how everything goes. And uh, fingers crossed, guys. Well, guys, I did not get as much done as I was hoping to today, but that's all right. We still got at least a chunk of it done. So like I was saying, I am going to have to make an adapter for the alternator. I do want to run the alternator while we're breaking this in. So we have voltage to uh, maintain this thing for the 20 minutes. We'll cover that a little bit, but this set of headers, I had to take the 90 degree adapter or oil filter adapter off that uh, Tony installed on the block. Unfortunately, um, if you guys are installing headers, I would highly recommend just using the stock regular one. The the 90 degree, I don't really, I don't think you really need it for this engine, but um, you know, it's there and it's, I don't have the original one anymore. So we will work with what we have. I don't think we're gonna have a problem reinstalling it. Uh, haven't done it yet, so I guess we'll wait and see. This side though, oh boy. So I wish this was that easy to install. Uh, you have to dismantle the uh, entire steering underneath here so that you can actually fit that through the center pipes. Now, the benefit of doing it that way is it does look like the very large stock starter will fit on this engine. I'll try to fit that on tomorrow, but a couple bit of a pain. It was, I had to uh, put a few dents in the this beautiful set of headers, unfortunately, but I couldn't clear certain parts without it. And then speaking of clearancing, the uh, current way this came to me, one, the uh, the actual plate here was just totally warped from them welding it. So uh, that really sucked. And uh, down below, the steering rode on top of one of the pipes. So when I had it all back together here, I had to take it back off and, you know, beat the heck out of it so that that would actually clear it. And... Uh, Speaking of clearances, and we got really lucky here, I went to go buy a uh, radiator the other day, and I was kind of kind of put off by the price. It cost $250, maybe a little bit more, I couldn't remember. With taxes, we would have been well in the $270. And uh, I figured, you know, I have the old radiator from the pickup truck, which was for three, uh, yeah, 360, so it should have plenty coolant capacity for the 318. But... I'm like, uh, let's try to see if it'll fit first. And believe it or not, as far as clearances go, other than the fact I still need to clearance or uh, re-angle this hood because it is it is rubbing against the uh, the front, but that's an easy fix. She closes all up. Tomorrow I'll get myself some uh, hood pins after I re-adjust it, drill the holes, put it in there, and then we'll be happy. But yeah, right now she's hitting. But she's not hitting the radiator, which means we are saving a few dollars by using the pickup truck radiator and it actually she moved over a little bit because i was messing with something but the uh i could just drill holes and put a couple nuts in this thing and she's gonna be good to go these are the oem for this car hoses and they they line up perfectly for both the top and lower so now it's just a matter of reinstalling all the stuff that we need so we can start it i am like i said i'm gonna pull the electronics out of that truck and we are also going to break this thing out here so I could start up the car out front here. That's why I moved it, because I was trying to see where I'd be able to set this up. We'll be able to use oil temperature. We also have uh, another uh, gauge that was sent to me by Ed. So we'll have oil temperature, water temperature, oil pressure. We're not going to use the boost gauge on this. We'll be able to monitor our voltage. We have different types of controls on this thing. So, you know, this was meant for, obviously a little bit more sophisticated engine. I built this five years ago. I had had hopes to put a few more gauges in here. Um, anyways, so we have a few different ways of starting everything up. First, we have our main power. We have an emergency shutoff in case things go a little bit awry. We have our starter. So this will be what we're gonna jump our starter off of. And uh, I might bypass that on this because we can actually just do it right over there and uh, not need this. But when you have... Uh, a computer controlled engine it's nice to have a button seeing how you don't have that cool little spot to bridge but um yeah yep we're able to do quite a bit with this and it's 
I made it out of, oh yeah, and we have RPM right here, which we're going to be able to monitor that, which is super cool. But um, yeah, it's an old alarm box that was left over from a job. And uh, yeah, she's uh, she's all you need for this glorious stuff. So look at this. We are making progress. I still need to go ahead and put these in here, but the radiator is fixed. Not only is it fixed, but we have our uh, hood pins in. So I, I have to uh, go ahead and I'm going to pull them back out and do a better paint job on them. Uh, I don't really like the way they look right now, but we will adjust that. So we have a lot of coolant lines we need to bolt in. One cool thing about this radiator is that it has the capacity for cooling the transmission, which is great because the current transmission coolant uh, radiator thing here is literally disintegrating. Part of it was on the ground earlier. So it's just, just literally falling apart. So it is junk. That being said, the transmission lines were also no good. And so we're gonna have to go to the store and I'm gonna go ahead and take a long walk over to it. And uh, it's a beautiful store. It's the best store, it's red and it's right over here. So because this is going to be totally different than what it currently is, I'm not worried about anything inside here, nothing. So that means coolant reservoir, windshield wiper fluid reservoir, and a bunch of other things. We're gonna be pulling electronics out of here and everything. So now I think I covered that in yesterday little video thing, but so don't worry about that. You, you already know, you already know about that. The uh, heating core lines, we're gonna go ahead and pluck those. Hopefully the heating core is still good in the, the car. Uh, I guess we'll find out, but yeah. For right now, we're just gonna bypass it so that we can run the engine without worrying about all the crap inside there. Um, but today, we'll come back for this later, but we'll pull this out. Transmission coolant lines will pull out another day, but that's the important one. Okay, guys, it has been kind of slow as far as getting progress on the car done because I've been doing other things. And uh, I got to say, I am pretty excited by how much progress has been done just this morning. I have all of the electrical pulled out of the pick -em up truck over there. And uh, the reason why we're going to be using the wiring harness out of the truck is we can definitely we can get it adapted to this car no problem but the wiring harness in this car is just just junk it's chewed up in a lot of spots you know it's just not really any good so it's it's going to be nice to just get rid of the old just junk and go with stuff that i know is good that being said there was a few things that we we were having problems with when i parked it and uh one, this right here is an emission control thing, so right in the garbage with that. This right here is going to be our electronic ignition control, and uh, unfortunately, all of the potting material, which should look closer to this guy right here, uh, it's it's has leaked down on the firewall, which is strange, but okay. So we're going to go ahead and assume that this is no bueno. Interestingly enough, as far as what the Haynes manual that I bought when I bought the truck five years ago or whatever totally junk it's totally useless except for the wiring diagram so that's one thing i do have to say about the haynes generally speaking their wire diagrams are pretty accurate that being said this is the wiring diagram from 79 to 80 and it matches the wiring diagram i have or not diagram the wiring harness that i have in my pick -em up truck and my truck is an 81 so I don't know what the heck happened here, if it was a crossover or something, but maybe because it was a heavier duty truck, I, I really don't know. But I, I'll tell you what, it matches perfect. I was scratching my head looking at the, uh, the 81 to, I think, 85. Where was it? I don't know. It's somewhere behind there. But it doesn't matter. That's the wiring harness we need. And, uh, yeah, we just... One big issue I have with the control unit is this one has five as opposed to four, if you can't tell right there, I think we should be all right. We're gonna assume that that one's good and we're gonna pretty much ignore everything else that's in this wiring harness. So next thing is we also have to find eventually where we're gonna put the windshield wiper reservoir. So I know I picked this spot right here for the coolant. If I can somehow shimmy that reservoir right here, that'd be great. I actually, it matched up with the bolts for the old reservoir so for the windshield wiper so i kind of just put that there if i need to move it and just you know put self tappers or something in to hold this thing i will but i would like the reservoir on this side although i do have enough hose 
that we can in fact move it to the other side. So not a big deal. Just the wiring harness will kind of work better on this side. I'm rambling. So that actual uh, resistor back there is from my truck anyway. So we're going to just, we know that's good. We're going to use that one and just whoosh, ignore everything else. Anyways, just figured I'd give you guys a, a quick little where we're at. Now I'm going to go ahead and start wiring this son of a gun up. Unfortunately, for some reason, the uh, GoPro stopped recognizing the battery pack, so I did lose you guys at some point during the time lapse on the wiring. So here's what's going on, because I really have no idea where I lost you guys. I'm not going to be able to use this wiring harness in the long run, but we'll have to repair the old one. No big deal. Just I want to make sure we have a wiring harness we're very confident in for the brake on on this engine. I don't want it to just shut off mid engine, like mid run. This is, uh, of course, the setup. We have the, the temperature right here. We have the oil pressure here. And a big shout out to Ed. Thank you very much for sending up a new old stock oil temperature gauge for when we do build ourselves a proper engine test stand. And I love the font that's in it and just the craftsmanship of the older pieces of equipment. So I just wanted a big shout out. I do very much appreciate when you guys send up uh, or down, depending on where you're from, uh, parts pieces and stuff it really does go a long way for the project so thank you very much ed i do very much appreciate it the uh the engine's getting there though like i said a few more things to go we have to get this thing we have to be very confident that she'll just start right up and in fact i am not even going to be mounting the fuel tank quite yet we're going to be using a boat fuel tank and we're going to hook her right up to the the uh mechanical fuel pump down there i think it'll be great Anyways, guys, let's uh, tidy her up and, oh yeah, and we have to tap into this thing right here, which one of the benefits of this wiring diagram is we'll have the, uh, the know-how of what is what, so we can tap that right into certain things in here. Yep. Now I know what some of you are going to say, that I spent way too much time, way too much time developing my portable test stand. Cars are test stands in my mind, and I never have to go inside a car to see what the car is doing. Now, I have a very analytical mind, so I think this is really, really cool. I'll be able to monitor the 
water temperature. Eventually I want to put that uh, oil temperature gauge in there. We have the volts meter, which there's something wrong with it. I have to sort that out. Boost gauge, obviously no boost on this thing, but we have a boost gauge. Yeah, we can run oil pumps, fuel pumps, you name it. And it's expandable. My goal is to make it so that eventually I can just use these plugs on the top, which if we open that up, I kind of see how they're sitting. But I would really like to be able to use those and uh, use fittings for, like this is for a boost, but this is for the oil. I would like to be able to use fittings. I can't do that with the temperature, unfortunately, but you know what I mean, for the most part. So I think it's really cool. She's all wired up for this and uh, good enough for the, this test right here, which we will do in the morning, but I'll show you how this thing works. Oh, and I did away with the idea of using the truck wiring harness. There was just too much crap in there. So I took the wiring harness that was on the engine or in the engine bay and that was all boogered up and I just, I made my own. So now you just turn her on, close to 13 volts, which actually, uh, this readout is wrong. If we go by my multimeter, it's actually 13.2 volts. So I didn't know that until now. We have our emergency stop. We have to turn that or turn it, pull that. Then we have this on off. We turn that on. You can actually see a light turn on in there, which I will move the LED to the outside. We'll also put oil temperature or oil pressure, little warning lights and stuff like that right built into here, but baby steps, <laughs> we'll get there. So now we have power going throughout this entire thing, not the voltmeter thing, cause that's boogered up and I don't know why. So now just, I'm just gonna bump it cause we don't have fuel to it yet, but. And it's all done right there. So that's it for right now. Tomorrow, we will go ahead and try getting it started. I know some of you guys are probably like yelling at your screen, just start the darn thing. But I gotta make sure that the carburetor's full of fuel. I want this thing to be able to snap right on. I wanna make sure we're getting spark. I, I just, I really don't wanna hurt this engine. So, you know, we're re-breaking in these lifters. I did cover them with uh, the engine, engine assembly loop. So I, I don't think there's a problem just bumping over a couple times, but. Anyways, and oh no, the thing's going wild, kills the power to the entire thing. No spark, nothing. So that way, if something's going crazy, we can just kill it like that and no big deal. So I'm proud of this. I'm not gonna dismantle, I'm just gonna stuff it inside the engine. I still need to build the bracket for the alternator. And uh, well, that's it for right now. So I'll see you guys in the morning which will be very short for you. Now, I know this video is taking a little bit longer to drop than I was hoping, but I really want to have this thing running in the video. I want this to be just engine dropped in and running. So we've had a few issues. One, the alternator that was sent from Rock Auto, it's not the right one for this car. The, the bracketry and everything wouldn't work with it. It still sat too far in. So I end up using the original alternator for now so that we can at least, you know, run our, our coolant fan. It's not ideal, but it is at least going to keep the engine cool. I hope so. We are all set as far as the coolant goes. It's a little hard to open that up with that right there. Did any of it leak out overnight? Nope. So no leaks. That's good. So far, no leaks. We'll see. The day is young. But uh, the big issue was no spark and I couldn't figure it out. I checked all the grounds, I double checked everything. And so I called up Tall John from Tall John's Fun Shop. If you haven't already checked him out, the link in the description down below. He also sent over a curved distributor so that we can kind of get moving on this project. So huge shout out to him, a big thank you for his help. The, you know, when I call him, just like John Wilburn, when I call him, he answers. You know, I really, really appreciate it. So check out his channel, hit that subscribe button. You know, you can definitely learn some stuff. I know I have. And uh, yeah, he's he's helped me quite a bit with troubleshooting things like, you know, the whole idea about why the oil was, uh, oil pressure was low between John, uh, John from Tall John's Fun Shop, John Wilburn and Nick from uh, Nick's Garage. This, this engine really owes them a lot. So check out all three of their channels and hit the subscribe button. I do very much appreciate it. Now, back to why we didn't have Spark or why I called them. And that was the, uh, I checked everything out. 
And it's still, I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure out why we weren't getting spark. So I, I really can't spin this engine too much to figure out why, because we have the new lifters in here and we don't want to improperly break them in. So I called him up and he said something that immediately made me think, oh, you know what? I haven't done that. So what was, or what it was, the cable going from, he said, have you checked the cable going from there to the distributor? And I said, no. So I, I rang it out with my uh, little multimeter and one side, I believe it was the, the, the male side coming from this side. No, the female side coming from this side was no good. And I couldn't figure out why. I replaced the wire, I cut it back and spliced it in, still was no good. And what it ended up being was the connector inside was broken. So I cut the one off the pickup truck wiring harness, re-spliced it and we have spark. So now this morning I've been setting up the fuel tank, which if you look over here, we have a, ooh, she's building up some serious pressure. Let's go ahead and just alleviate that a little bit. <laughs> wow. So we have a, boat fuel tank going to the mechanical fuel pump going up to the actual carburetor now i got to take that back off so i can fill the carburetor up with gasoline so that there's gas in the carburetor we don't have to wait for it to be pulled up to it that being said this is obviously not a permanent solution i just really want to make sure that we take as many potential issues out of the engine as possible and uh so let's go ahead oh yeah and if we Kind of just i put you on the tripod i'll take you back off for a second if you look over there the reason why the jeep's there is because once again we're not using that alternator and uh the voltage regulator none of that's hooked up so we're going to actually rely on the jeep for the 20 minutes for right now just so you can hear it start up we are going to just go ahead and run it without the jeep running so you know first startups on engines on youtube the one thing that really bothers me is when people do it and they have music, talk radio going, or another car running. You want to just hear the sound. So I'm also going to use my iPhone, which has a better audio uh, in a different spot, so we can really hear it just kind of click on, and we'll, uh, we'll have a really good startup. Fingers crossed. <laughs> All right. Now, guys, I got to say, I wasn't expecting this thing to work as well as it does. I was going to just use this, but we'll probably squirt a tiny bit of fuel in through there. But as it stands right now, with no oil, uh, fuel pump running, I'm getting enough pressure to be able to actually pump fuel into it right through the actual carburetor. So I don't know, fingers crossed our rebuild was good. <laughs> so there's a lot of unknowns from this engine. We're really gonna just have to cross our fingers here. Not the engine, but just everything. Like we have our, you know. Anyways, I'm really excited guys. I don't know about you. Um. All right, I don't know if there's much more to do it other than just to do it. A little bit of squirt, squirt. I think we're all hooked up now. We're gonna wait for this car to go by. And hopefully everything on here will uh, give us a good readout. And uh, here we go. Why did she shut off now? You know what? I think we're running out of juice. I'm going to start the Jeep up now. All right, that was barely five minutes. We want this thing to run like that for 20. Yep, that's what it was. I 
got to play with that. That's not good. Well guys, I would say that this was a success. Now we have some weird noise coming from the alternator, which doesn't matter because that alternator is junk. It sounds like there's something slapping around inside there. Um, but we have that brand new one. Unfortunately, with the current bracketry, it won't fit. And this is just really to run the, uh, the fan right here. This isn't really meant to be permanent. I am going to go to a salvage yard and get a non-air conditioning bracket system for this. I know where there's a car that has it. Um, I actually know where there's five cars that has it. So we'll go ahead and uh, we won't put the air conditioning on here for a while and we'll just enjoy the car as it sits and uh, sweat, you know, sweat our butt off inside it, but that's all right. And uh, I just love the way this thing looks. So we have that weird noise coming out of there and we have uh, a few other issues while we're running it. One, it's burning oil from the passenger side. And the only thing that I can explain, because I did not touch the valve train since uh, we were down at Tony's. When we were up at Nick's, it didn't smoke. The only thing I can think of is when I had it upside down, replacing the, the 318 crank with the 340 crank and the, all the bearings and everything like that, it sat upside down for probably about two to three weeks. So it's probably, and it was on that side as kind of at an angle. So it probably had some oil pass through or across the bearing or the bearings, the uh, rings, and there's probably just residual oil inside the, the cylinders. That's the only thing I can think of. But we had a full 20 minutes of break-in at 2,000 RPM, according to the Bosch RPM machine here. And uh, our oil pressure was, when we first started off, was at 60, and I couldn't figure that out. And I wasn't, or not 60, it was at 40, and I, I wasn't really particularly happy. And uh, about... 10 minutes in, I noticed that there was a line of oil all the way down through there. And I popped this open. I'm like, what the heck? When I put this together originally years ago, apparently I didn't tighten that enough. And uh, she was leaking from there. So I went ahead and uh, tightened her down and she stayed at above 60 the entire time. And when I revved her up, she uh, more than kept the 10 PSI per thousand RPM. We were closer to 70-ish uh pounds of oil while I was at um, 
I think I was at probably close to 4,500 RPM. I didn't go that high up after that. So we revved it a few times. Our, our overall temperature never went above uh, 90. I think I have an 80, 180 degree thermostat in there. I can't remember. I know I got one of the hotter ones because I, I like I like that with this. And, uh, you know, I know if you run them a little bit hotter, they're a little bit better on economy. At least that's what I was told. But um, that's why I knew her engines run a lot hotter than that so and i don't think we really broke it in proper when we were up at next because it just had that oil issue so the rings were still probably finding their their jive if you will and uh yeah i'm very very pleased with this guys i'm i am thrilled and i gotta say uh it's definitely not an economy car because i had this thing almost completely full right about here apparently apparently that's the safe i was living on the edge guys i had her right to there and now she's to there so she's lost that much fuel just having a 20 minute break in so this thing's gonna have about as good gas mileage as uh i guess as one can expect from this thing but <laughs> i'm rambling i i uh i ramble when i get excited i'm all just really really stoked and i'm very 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 happy that we've been on this journey it's been a long journey with this engine and uh Next step, of course, is, you know, we enjoy it while the whole situation happens. You know, when things start to cool down, we can bring this up to Nix. We'll pull this engine out and we'll bring it back to Nix. And uh, what a what a trip, guys. She's loud, too. Oh, my God. We need to put mufflers on it. There's just no way I'm going to be able to run it with no mufflers. Uh, way louder than I remember it being at Nix, but I have a feeling it's because you had the pipes going into that air baffle thing, so... Wow. That's all I got to say, guys. All right. We still have a lot of work to be done. I want to relocate the battery to the uh, the trunk, which is going to be an ordeal. But ultimately, I think it will be a advantageous move. And uh, so we have a little bit of a ways to before we enjoy it. But, I mean... <sighs> Let me know what you guys think. If you like the longer format videos where more stuff gets done. I know a lot of people like... I get about 50-50. Some people like the more vlogging style and some people like the uh, stuff gets done kind of style. So, you know, do me a favor and uh, in the comment section down below, let me know what you think. I, I kind of like this way because I feel like more things get accomplished. Um, but yeah. Once we get the uh, a few things sorted out, a lot of things sorted out, we'll go uh, for a nice long cruise with it. And do a lot of burnouts. <laughs> I love it. Guys, all right. I, I, I'm talking your ears off. Um, the only thing I have left to say is just remember, keep her shiny side up. And as always, God bless.